Hey, 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 hey! It's okay, look! It's just a soldering iron. Calm down. Come here, little buddy. There you go. Jeez. Right, well, it's not a dog. It's a Hot Wheels MK2, so let's pop it open. So, in this video, I'm gonna use a soldering iron to make a roll cage for this car. And this was inspired by two things. One, Fred Wyver, he's a builder on the Gaslands UK Facebook group. Really awesome builder. Check him out if you're on Facebook. And the other was uh, a recent video by the Jakarta Project Diecast YouTube channel. Where he did something similar to this as well. So I thought I'd give it a go. Let's get a good look at the body to see where we want to start cutting. And we'll grab some wheels. There we go. I'm going to use some masking tape to get myself a line to cut on. It helps keep the saw from marring up. My plan is to bend these paper clips into shape and solder them away from the car, the rest of the body that you don't want to cut. The hatchback is no back. I want to keep the original paint and tampos on this car, bring a more aggressive line to the wheel arch here in the back. Let's keep chopping. Oh, uh oh! Godzilla's attacking! Looking pretty good. I'll have to fix up this uh, black plastic base. I think cutting it flush and sawing some pieces off with this hobby saw will do the trick. I think I can save a lot of time by heat bending this base. to provide our rear suspension. That'll do it. After getting the wheels to a good height, I thought it would look good if I tapered the rear of the car. So I thought I'd try to bend it, and then this happened. So I guess we're going with this now. And now for the star of the show, this cheap 30 watt soldering iron from the dollar store. It was like three bucks, but it is from the dollar store. And the other star of the show is these paper clips. I don't actually know the gauge of this wire, but it's smaller than a millimeter. I think it's somewhere close to half a millimeter, but the scale worked out really well with this car. My plan is to bend these paper clips into shape and solder them away from the car so I can paint it separately and then attach it at the end. At least that's the plan. If you're gonna try something like this, it would probably be really beneficial to have a set of helping hands. Uh, the actual tool, not a helper. Unless you wanna burn your helper. 
you'll probably burn a helper's fingers. Uh, yeah. Anyways, this was very tedious and really annoying. I needed at least two other hands uh, to hold everything up, and you can see how I end up propping things here and there with tweezers and a, a roll of masking tape. I ended up leaving a bunch of crap on my desk to just set things on top of it. What you're looking at now is a really embarrassing example of how lazy I am. Uh, I didn't want to go and get a wet sponge to clean the tip of the soldering iron. Uh, this is very essential uh, in making sure the solder has a way of getting from the soldering iron onto what you're trying to attach together. And yeah, clean your tip. You can use just a regular kitchen sponge with some water. This project was quite the journey and uh, I got there in the end but I very nearly gave up and switched back to styrene, uh, something I'm more comfortable with. But I'm glad I didn't. Uh, it came out really well in the end. Maybe you can tell from the lighting in the shot, but this is one of the rare occasions that I had some time to build during the day. My room has some big windows with a lot of natural light coming in. That's why it's a bit different than usual, but I only had two days to work on this car. I was grateful to have some extra time during an afternoon. And let me just say that if you get really frustrated with something that you're trying to accomplish, putting it down, stepping away, coming back the next day or the next time you have some time to work on it, just stepping away from it really, really helps. There was a day or two in between when I started this build and where this footage is from. And just taking a step back and thinking about it. I went from wanting to quit to wanting to fall back on my styrene abilities to wanting to try soldering it again. And I think it's important to take a breather. And of course, I was having fun, but I thought I was hitting a wall that told me I needed to give up and try something else. Uh, but actually, it was just a little bit of fatigue, and yeah, I overcame it, and getting a fresh look at it on another day is really, I can't say enough what it does for you to look at something with fresh eyes. I'm rambling on. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is, even if you think it would make sense to go in a different direction, sit on it for a day or two and let your brain just kind of deconstruct what's actually going on. I took a break from soldering to make a little front axle mount. It'll give me a little bit of clearance from the front fenders there. And I thought I'd fill the void in the back of this roll cage area with a 3D printed barrel. This will be the fuel tank. And back to working on the cage. So my goal for this car was to keep the original Hot Wheels paint. I liked the number and the color scheme and I thought it added some realism to have the sponsor decals on there. So when I'm soldering things like this roof bar, I was being extra careful not to get hot solder onto the paint because it's going to bubble and peel off. You can also see the effort I'm going to to keep this separate until it's painted. It gets a lot more difficult later when I start adding the front to this cage. But for now, it still works pretty well. And here I'm adding a bit of mesh behind the seats to obscure just a wide open area. I'll go ahead and super glue that on. Uh, the solder is not going to stick to this aluminum mesh. So we'll let that dry. I then formed some more wire around the front fenders and the grill of the car just to complete the all-around look. I kept cracking some of the solder joints to bend it open and close. And you can see this is getting really difficult to take off. And this is what the finished cage looks like before priming. Ta-da! I sprayed a Tamiya gloss yellow, just a rattle can, on the roll cage, metallic silver on the gas barrel, and uh, just a regular primer gray for the rest. Since we're trying to keep the original paint on this car, uh, I'm just going to rough it up a bit with uh, some files and sandpaper, give our weathering a better chance to take hold. And I want to see how well this 
Citadel Typhus Corrosion Technical Paint adheres. So I'll put some in a less conspicuous area and I'll allow that to dry. Um, we'll come back to that later and see how durable it is. Can't go wrong with a light brown interior and black for all the extras. Let's check back in on that Typhus Corrosion test we did. And I'm pretty pleased, this is really durable. Uh, you can rub on it, it's not coming off. Unless you use your fingernail, this stuff seems pretty solid. Even on the unsanded parts. So we'll go ahead and use that to cover up all of the shiny bare metal from sanding and cutting. This paint adds a really nice texture, uh, and the color and texture combined, I think simulates mud stuck on the car pretty well. So that's what I'll use it for. I painted my favorite flat metallic for the base, gloss metallic silver for the grill and rims, homemade black wash on the interior, flat black on the tires, black marker on the windshield wipers, silver dry brush on all that flat metallic. And you can see just how hard it is to get this roll cage back on the body. I broke the front corner here a little bit, but it's nothing a little super glue and baking soda can't fix. And of course we need to dirty up that roll cage. And I'll add a grimy black and brown wash mixed together for the fuel barrel and the rims. And for the last step, I went with the same kind of mix of brown and black. I had to build it up in a couple layers. And the typhus corrosion came out again. And for the last step, I used those pastel powders for a dust and glued everything together with some super glue. And here it is all put together. Man, this thing turned out so cool. As always, when I put the base coat colors on, especially that yellow. I wasn't so sure, but going through the weathering step brings it into its own, and man, this thing is really cool. Uh, I'm thrilled about how realistic this looks. Thanks for watching, guys. I love reading your comments down below. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I'd like to invite you to subscribe and check out all my other videos. I hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you on the next build.